The goal in getting a new space was to have a venue where music could be presented in the very best way possible. To make a place that will become beloved akin to a Spoleto or a Tango or Aspen Festival. My goal is that this be a destination for music lovers from around the world and that we are second to none in terms of artistic quality. The festival began in 1981. It began as a series of eight concerts over two weekends, Thursday through Sunday. It was always held at the Rockport Art Association, which is diagonally across the street. Our little stage in the old venue at the Art Association could only contain six people with a nine-foot Steinway. So the largest uh, ensemble would be a sextet. When I came on the board, it seemed to me that what was needed was a venue for this place. I just knew that a venue would make such a difference if they're having their own building, their own space. The Chamber Music Festival had looked for eight or ten years, and it became clear to me that this group really wanted to be in downtown Rockport. So it was like we drew a circle on the map and we said, we'll only look here. A realtor called me and said, well, there's the Haskins building, Tom. You should take a look at that. So we basically bought the air rights, and we had the right to rebuild on the same footprint. And so we made a deal. We worked hard to find the right form for the concert setting, one which would be tremendous acoustics and would create the sense of intimacy between the performer and the audience. That's what the Rockport music community loved so much about the arts building, where everybody sat close and around the stage, and we didn't want to lose that. The notion of the window behind the stage looking out to the water was a major feature. And then once we had the shape of the space, we then had to figure out where on the site to put it and how to orient it. We started with the acoustician. We pulled in Larry Kierkegaard very early on. You want not to hear the boats outside or the cars on the street or laughter on the sidewalk or any of the mechanical system noise that just gets in the way. You want to absolutely sparkly clean windows to the sound. Uh, no, no spots, no dots, no haze, no nothing that gets in the way of just being you and the music. We knew that we had the right shape. We weren't trying to do something radically different because it's a shoebox. That's what Symphony Hall is and all the great concert halls are. But we were doing it on a smaller scale and we just had to trust our acoustician and our architect who had worked together on Seiji Ozawa Hall and I think about 20 other places. This building is basically a concrete shell. We put inside of that materials that we think are going to resonate with a character. We wanted to use timber as an efficient means of providing structure that would also give character. The crisscrossing members serve us both structurally. We want to hold the building from falling over. At the same time, they create this wonderful line of a, almost an a uplifting feeling more like a church. This was a Victorian building, 
and um, we talked about Victorian colors and then relating all of the materials and finishes in the building to what you would see looking out the window. The window behind the stage was one of the first features that we conceived of. Daytime, there's much too strong light for a performer to stand in front of the glass, and so we developed these gorgeous wood screens to create closure to the room. I designed what I think of as an architectural seascape of the dug fur woven on steel rods. As the light comes through, it scallops because of the weave so that you see the scallops like you see scallops on the water. The railings were designed with the same woven pattern as the stage shutters. They're not curved pieces of wood, but they create curves which diffuse the sound. The sound from an instrument goes mostly in all directions, but that's not a concert hall. A concert hall adds a lot of reflections around it that sustain that sound over a period of time. The symphony Hall has a 1.8 second reverberation time. For chamber music, you want a little more articulation than that, just to be able to hear the subtleties of the inner voices. We aimed here for about a second and a half of reverberation time, the afterglow of that sound. It's a warm hug. The wonderful moment is going to be at that 8 o'clock concert when it's dusk and the sun is setting and there will be a spectrum of color in the sky and reflected in the water that will be a wonderful backdrop to music. We kept the stage low so that musicians were not elevated. We can see the facial expressions of the musicians. We can see the fingering of the instruments. At the same time, you're able to look across and see one another, and you feel like you're sharing this moment with the community of audience. And uh, that, I think, is the magic, special magic of hopefully this place. There's always this doubt, you know, we're building it for the sound. Will it work? I think that it does. The sound is so clear and so full and vibrant that uh, it's incredible. <laughs>